Well, hello, computer nerds, electronics geeks, retro computing enthusiasts, YouTubers of all stripes. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to episode two of my trying to resurrect this old Heathkit model ET3400 microprocessor trainer. Now, actually, actually, I lie. This is not episode two. This is episode 2.1, because I had already filmed episode two in its entirety and was about to start editing it. So what was episode two going to be all about? Well, as we know from episode one, I got this ET3400 trainer because it has no back. So I got it cheap because complete and functional units are very expensive. These things are selling for a lot of money if they're complete and they work. Okay. I saw this one, got it cheap because it has no back. The transformer's hanging out. So yeah, so I got this cheap. So episode two that I've already filmed was going to be all about building a back for it. And I was going to build a temporary wooden back with some just some pieces of wood for the sides and a piece of plywood for the bottom just to get the thing up and running. And then I took a whole bunch of measurements of, you know, the position of the screw holes and you know, this thing is actually a trapezoid. It's skewed. It's not square, even though it looks like it. It's, it's narrower here than it is here. I took a whole bunch of measurements, and I was going to um, eventually 3D print a back for it. So that's what episode two is all about. That, and I also did some cleaning on it and replaced some missing screws. I'll reuse some of that footage. But the whole back idea... <laughs> It's out the door. Okay, because after I was done filming, I had a brilliant, brilliant, if I do say so myself, idea. So here I'm going to insert a little bit of the more usable footage from the original episode two. And then we'll move on to episode 2.1. And I think the first thing I'm going to do, the very first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to get the dust out of it. I think this thing was laying bottom up because it is very dusty in here yeah I don't know if you see the dust wafting away as I do this but yeah it's very very dusty in here and I want to get rid of some of some of this dust that's accumulated in the cobwebs that have accumulated in the back of this thing so we'll make that the first thing I do to it And I've been watching some YouTube videos, other YouTube videos on uh, ET3400s and people who bought old ones and are bringing them back to life. And apparently they are very, quite rugged. Um, so I'm going to follow the advice I saw in a YouTube video from another, um, another YouTuber. His name escapes me right now, but I will find it and I will put it in a, in a caption down here or in the comments. And um, he just brought his up the first time using a Bariac so that he could bring the voltage up very slowly. And I might do that and just, uh, you know, watch the voltage rails, uh, the DC voltage rails and see what's happening. Um, watch the caps to see if they start smoking or swelling or whatever. And just try bringing it up that way and see what happens. And uh, hopefully nothing much is going to happen. Hopefully it'll just come up and uh, and uh, work good because uh, they were apparently very well built. Okay, that is a lot cleaner. A lot of the dust off of it. And this side has kind of the same issue. There's a lot of dust down in the nooks and the crannies on this thing. I should probably get some compressed air and blow it out. I may do that later. Let me see if I can loosen it up anyway. Oh, it's already looking a little cleaner. Down between the keys here. Yeah, it's very dusty in the keys. Oh, it's already looking a lot better. I don't know if the difference is showing up on camera, but it's already looking a lot better. Now, as I uh, take a closer look at it, I can see that there are two screws missing here and here. 
that hold on the keypad. Yeah, there's uh, there's standoffs back here that that would screw into. So I will have to see if I can find replacement screws. Those look to be pan heads. I would imagine they're imperial, probably something like uh, a 632 or an 832. I probably have something that'll work in my screw drawers. So I will look and see because I got a feeling that banging on the keys for a while without those screws holding that uh, without the screws holding this board in tight could cause some problems. I don't know if those were just never there or they came out for some reason. I'll have to look in the bottom of the boxes came in. Maybe they just fell out in shipping too. It's possible they're in there. It's got the RAM expansion, which is nice. So it's got double the original amount of RAM. The, uh, the expansion header was never soldered in though. But that's that's again an easy job. I can do that. I can solder the expansion header in. Which I will probably want to use that at some point on this thing. I need to go after this with a damp rag in places. There are a few stains here and there too. But on the whole it looks pretty darn good. All right, well that was easy. I've done my first bit of repair on this thing. I looked through my uh, drawer of miscellaneous screws. One of my drawers of miscellaneous screws. I actually have quite a few of them sorted by this, that, and the other thing. And I found two slotted pan head screws that fit perfectly to hold the keyboard in. It's not sort of flopping over here on this side anymore. Um, they're pretty much an exact replacement for the screws that are missing, except they're a little shinier. I think maybe the original screws here, 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 and other places, I think they were, they're probably um, galvanized, and then these replacements I found maybe stainless steel, but that's okay, they're good enough. They're slotted pan head screws, they're the right size, the right thread, the right length. Uh, I don't have to run to the hardware store and buy any, so that's, that's a beautiful thing. So, okay, so we've got the first little bit of repair done on this unit. Okay, so my uh, brilliant idea for uh, the back is that uh, well Heathkit sold a lot of these trainers um, not just this uh, ET3400 um, microprocessor trainer they sold like um, digital logic trainers analog trainers uh, um, just general um, electrical trainers and whatnot but they pretty much use the same case design and some of those other trainers are available really really cheap I mean this one's expensive if you, you know you find one of these that's complete and functional you're talking a lot of money for this that's why I got this one cheap because it has no back transformers hanging out right so I got this one cheap but after I finished filming uh, the original episode 2 I went I had an idea I went and I looked on eBay at some of the other trainers available and guess what I found yeah Here's an ET3200 Digital Logic Trainer, or Digital Design Experimenter, however you want to call it. I got it dirt cheap. I mean, even in pristine condition, these are selling for not too much money. But this is not in pristine condition. This was obviously used in a school environment. It's a little beat up. It's got writing on it. It's got tape on it, tape residue. It's, it's been heavily used, okay? I got this really, really cheap, but it's got the same case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal the back off of this trainer, and I'm going to put it on the ET3400. It looks like it should fit perfectly. In fact, half the screws are already missing, so it should, should be pretty easy to get apart. Uh, the only thing I'm a little worried about is I'm going to have to find a way to mount the transformer in it. This has got a fuse holder in the side, whereas this has a much harder to get to fuse, although, you know what, I can always use the fuse holder. You know, that would be good. Here's the, here's the fuse on the 3400, kind of, it would be buried deep inside the case, so. Yeah, an easier to get to fuse holder would be nice. And the color is not a perfect match. This is a, this is a little brighter blue than this, but that's okay. This is for my own use. This is not, I'm not trying to uh, 
pimp this out and make it perfect for resale. This is for my own use. So um, I think this is going to work. Let me see if I can get this cover off and uh, get it on here. And uh, then we should be able to uh, move on to trying to uh, resurrect this and get it up and running. Alright, so let me see if I can get this back off. It shouldn't be too hard because half the screws are already missing. I imagine they've had to get into it fairly often to repair it if students have been using it. They've probably blown a few things out here and there over time. I remember how it was in my electronic labs. Not so much in college, but in high school. There were always a, a couple of kids who just delighted in blowing things up. So that one's already missing. And the sound of electrolytic capacitors exploding was, was a common thing in the electronics lab. By college, people were a little more serious. Okay, let's see here. Come apart. Screws out. What else is holding it together? It seems like something's holding it together. There is no screw in there. There is no screw in there. No, no. Let's see here. Is there clips there? No. Ooh, this has got the exact same transformer in it, it looks like. Wow. Okay. What's that mounted? Oh, I see how that's mounted. There's mounting points for the transformer. That's nice. If I can get this thing apart. What in the world is holding it together? Is there... It's almost like there's, there's another screw, but I don't see... Ah, tricky, tricky. There's a couple screws on the front holding it together. Okay, now that could be a problem because those screw mounting points are not present on the ET3400. Ah, yes. So, what that tells me is I might have to modify this back a little bit to make it work with the 3400, but that's okay. I can I can cut these these bosses off. That's not a problem. Look at that. That's that's the exact same transformer. That is the exact same transformer. Boy, they reused everything, didn't they? Look at this side by side. Yeah, exact same transformer. It's like the same voltages. Everything. So there's mounting points here. So what I will probably do is I will wire this transformer in here like this. Get rid of this. Uh, get rid of this tie point thing with uh, the fuse holder on it, and go with the the built-in fuse holder in here. Yeah, that's what I think I will do. I'll probably have to cut these off because. They're going to impinge. Yeah. They may or may not be in the way. Of course, they do have these brass threaded inserts, which I don't want touching the circuit board. We'll see. We'll see. This stuff may. These fins here may be in the way too. They may not be. I don't know what the. I don't know what the back on the original ET3400 looked like. I don't know if it had these fins on it or not. I'm sure it didn't have these. Okay, so I've got some work to do. I need to uh, further disassemble this. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, there's another terminal strip in here. Tie points on it. Just, they've, uh, They've upgraded to an actual fuse holder rather than this thing here. Okay, but pretty much it's the same otherwise. All right, so that's good. So yeah, I could just... Yeah, the color codes on the wires are exactly the same. Yeah. Yep. I could do this. That's easy. 
All right. Cool. All right. For a change, something's working. Yeah, the only difference here is um, this power switch is an actual power switch. It's an actual on-off switch, and they've got it wired as such. Whereas with the ET3400, um, basically the power's on all the time just to save programs in RAM, but you can shut down um, like the, the display and other stuff just so it's not using juice. I don't know what sort of uh, power saving feature that is. So what I will probably have to do is short these two red wires together so the power's on all the time. And this looks like, yeah, and they're bringing out um, a ground wire. Probably, yes, the green wire from the, from the power plug they're bringing out and grounding it to these connections here on the board. I don't know if I really have a place for that here. Doesn't look like it. Looks like this had a two wire connection on the 3400. So, got a three wire connection here still. I can make it work. It's not rocket science. And hey, I've done that too. So, you know, this should be easy. All right. Let me get to work disassembling this. And we'll see how well this fits on the back of here. All right, so I've disconnected the back from the uh, ET3200 trainer, and I'm test fitting it, and it looks like nothing is interfering. It looks like this is going to go right on there perfectly. So I think I have lucked out here. These, it, I don't think these bosses are in the way. I don't think they're um, coming up high enough to touch the circuit board. I may put some black tape over those... Uh, um, brass inserts just in case. Um, the fins don't seem to be interfering with anything. It looks like this is going to work great. So all I have to do is really here is uh, screw down this transformer where the other transformer was, hook up the wires. I need to short these two together so the power's on all the time and hey, we're in business. So well, first before I do that I'm going to clean the back out because there's some crud here, some accumulated crud, so I'll clean that out. Then I'll get to work. Um, rather than trying to solder in this uh, very, very confined space in here, um, I cut the wires long enough that I can splice them onto uh, the wires here. So I'll just cut these off of this, this terminal strip, and I will splice them onto the wires coming out of here. Put the uh, cover back on it. And uh, we should be good to go. All right, so let me get this cleaned out first. The old brain box is working today. Some days it's a little sluggish, but today it's working. I thought, you know what? I should check the fuse rating on this versus this. And sure enough, there's a difference. Um, the, uh, the ET3200 had a 3 16 amp slow blow fuse in it. The 3400, 3 amp slow blow fuse. So, yeah... And I can tell by how munged up the uh, the slot is on this fuse holder. They've had to replace the fuse in this thing a lot. Typical of students. Yep. So, okay. So now I've got the uh, got the 3 8 Let me make sure I haven't mixed them up. i got the 3 8 amp slow blow fuse in here. All right. Good. Yeah, I got to thinking, you know, the 3400 probably draws a little more current because it's got a lot more IC chips on it, so, yeah. Alright, so good. Now I just need to do some, uh, do some wire splicing and mount this transformer. We're in business, so the transformer should just drop right in here like so, yeah. And then I've got to splice some wires perfectly. Actually, I might splice the wires first so the transformer is not in the way of that process. Okay, so what I have done here is I've used butt splices here to splice the, uh, the transformer from the 3400 into the base from the uh, 3200. So you do these wires. And for the on-off 
what used to want to go to the on-off switch, I just used a, a wire nut to connect those together. Now, I had a thought while I was doing this. I might just drill a hole in the back of the, the case here at some point and mount an actual on-off switch because uh, being able to do a hard reset on this thing and clear the contents of RAM just by cycling the power might be useful in the future. So uh, I might do that. I think for now I'm just going to leave it as is just until I make sure that this thing is all up and running and working good. I still haven't electrically tested it. You know, I still got to do that. So, uh, but at least, wow, cut back. Got a back on it. Put this back on. Cover up those nasty high voltage leads in there so that they can't contact anything. Little Bakelite sheet looks like. So let's see how it fits together now that everything's in here. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Ah, I love standardization and interchangeable parts. Glad I live in an age of standardization and interchangeable parts. Let me tell you. So I only got, like I said, half the back screws, but that'll hold it together for now. I look through my junk box. Maybe I can find some more. Like I found screws for the front panel. These are a little odd, but I might have something that will work. I just realized I was working out of frame there, sorry. And one more. And we are ready to move on to electrical testing. Look at this. Ah, she's complete. <laughs> the baby's got back again. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's enough for one day, or at least one episode. I may work on this some more later. But uh, for now, I think we're going to call it quits. And um, hang around. In episode three, we'll start the electrical testing of this doohickey and see just... Uh, how well it works. Um, uh, this one over here, I think I'll just uh, scavenge for any usable components and uh, discard it. it. It really, you know, it, I got it dirt cheap. It really has no value now that I've stolen the back off of it. So, uh, nice transformer. I'll keep that. Um, maybe a few other odds and ends, but not much, I don't think. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and watching me try to get this thing up and running again and back together bit of a color mismatch but oh well I can live with that so anyway thanks for watching um, subscribe to see future videos on this and other retro computing subjects and of course all the other subjects I put out videos on like glass working and um, gold refining and gold recovery from e-waste and all the other videos that I do on all different kinds of subjects. Just subscribe and press the little bell icon that uh, YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.